Hello everyone, welcome to the 10 base t one s in AutoZAR presentation. I am Stephanie Shurakorn, I'm currently working at BMW's networking department, and today I would like to present the activity my colleagues and I took part around 10 base t one s into the context of AutoZAR. During this presentation, we will see what are the new features from 10 base t one s In the second part, I will give you an overview of AutoZAR itself. After that, I will present you our proposal to introduce 10 base T1S support in AutoZAR. And at the end, we will finish this presentation by a short summary. Before we start, I would like to get the global pictures on the current situation regarding the in-vehicle communications. At the first look on the current EE architectures, we observe that many different technologies are coexisting and that we could divide them into categories depending on the topology but also the communication way. So we have legacy versus with signal based and also the Ethernet topology with socket or service oriented communication. Originally, the in vehicle communication started with CAN bus, now also called legacy bus. But as the numbers of issues and digital functionality within the car increased, the UAM looked forward for other bandwidth alternatives, such as CANFD, FlexRay, Lean as well, and at last also Ethernet in a switch topologies. Each of these technologies came with their own specification, whether open or proprietary with license costs. This led to the need also to develop gateways to transmit information from one subnetwork to another. Another major actor in the automotive world is AutoZAR, which standardizes ECU software architectures and supports each of these technologies. While Ethernet is a widely used solution for high data rates communication above 100 megabits, an interesting fact is that more than 90% of the communication are actually below 10 megabits. So last year's the IEEE released a new specification for low-cost 10 megabit Ethernet in a bus topologies. And its introduction in AutoZAR is targeted for this year's November 2020. We know that Ethernet is already present in the vehicle and it is also supported by AutoZAR. So what are the new features that 10 base T1S is bringing? During this part, I will not explain in detail how Team Base T1S is working, but I will rather list it out three aspects that in fact di differentiate Team Base T1S from the existing automotive Ethernet. One of the features of Team Base T1S is to offer different types of PHY. We have the classic standalone PHY over an MII interface, but the Open Alliance is also specifying two other types. One of them is for low-cost microcontrollers over an SPI and encapsulating a MAC controller. The other type is an analog front-end file over three pins that also known as CAN-like file. And the last type, which will come in a later time, is the fully integrated file in the microcontroller. Second innovation in 10 base T1S is to enable bus topology for Ethernet called also multidrop. This allows us to redesign EE architectures and extend the Ethernet network. With these new features, depending on the application, we could replace legacy bus topologies via Ethernet multidrop. In that case, only a switch in our topology is necessary and no more gateway are needed. This will unify the network and bringing us a step forward to the old Ethernet or service-oriented architecture. Another aspect is that also we could replace some existing Ethernet connection by 10 base T1S, offering a more suitable bandwidth to some ECUs. Last features I listed out is that 10 base T1S is offering a more efficient medium access. Physical layer collision avoidance, known as PLCA, reuse the CSMACD structure, offering via round robin to all participants a cyclic fair medium access. A new transmission cycle is initialized by the head node, sending a beacon as a synchronization. And during a cycle, each node is granted a transmit opportunity to send one frame, unless the burst is configured. 
PLCA also allows to optimize the bandwidth use. As an example, I brought up two simplified cases in a multi-drop topology with three nodes. We see that the cycles are initialized by the beacon in red. And during a transmission cycle, if only one node needs to transmit and the others remain silent, like in case one, this node is able to reschedule its transmission at an earlier time. The second example is when a node sends a shorter message, the next node in the line is able also to transmit it at an earlier moment. This means that the transmit opportunities are dynamic and in comparison to classical time division access, this is less bandwidth wasted. Now that we went through 10 base T1S main features, I would like to shortly introduce AutoZAR to understand why this standard is very present in automotive. AutoZAR is a consortium of many partners from the automotive world. It is important to note that the co-partners are care manufacturers, but the majority of the other actors taking part are suppliers, software developers, service providers, but also electronic companies such as semiconductor manufacturers. They are all working together within the working groups and contribute to improve or update the standards to make their vision thrive. Since its creation in 2002, AutoZAR aspiration is to reduce complexity in EE architecture and increase software module reused by decoupling the application software from the hardware, defines clear interface and specifies also data exchange format between suppliers and OEM. This participates to reduce development times and also costs. As of today, AutoZAR offers a set of specifications published every year. It defines also a set of methodology and exchange formats for configurations as well as system description. And depending on the usage, we distinguished also two platforms. The first that was originally specified is the classic platform based on the OSEC operating system and adapted for low computing power and high safety criticality. And the second, the adaptive platform based on POSIX, which came later. The foundation assures the compatibility on the different platform and therefore contains all the common artifacts such as the protocols, the metamodels or the templates. After getting insight from 10 base T1S specificities and also learning who AutoZAR is, it is time to see which change in a specification needs to be done to support 10 base T1S. Before getting into the details, I would like to explain briefly how the new features are introduced in AutoZAR. Because many actors are taking part in the consortium, there are many processes, and introducing a new technology requires to establish a so-called concept. So in our case, BMW is the concept owner who announced the beginning of the activity in 2019. So before getting incorporated into the standard, a concept needs to reach milestones defined by the consortium and fulfilling requirements in order to establish its maturity. Each milestone will be reviewed and validated by the affected working group. As you can see, the concept is currently in the validation phase, meaning that this solution will be implemented on the prototype, and this is a cooperation between BMW and Microchip. Before drafting the solution, one of the first steps in the concept was to analyze the impact of the new features on the current AutoZAR specifications. During the elaboration phase, we needed to identify on the high level point of view which are the aspect relevant for AutoZAR specifications. So IEEE defines that the PLC algorithm is located on the reconciliation sublayers as part of layer 1, reusing the standardized MII signalization. This means on the MAC functional point of view, it shall remain transparent. However, the file requires to be configured and therefore we need to introduce new parameters in the specifications. Currently, AutoZAR is supporting point-to-point -point connection in half and full duplex, but the new types of topology is not supported and we will also need to extend the system templates for this new multi-drop topology. 
Our use case um, needs to support, of course, multi-drop topology and burst configuration, but we also want to take in account the already existing features supported by AutoSAR, like diagnostic over IP or patch networking, as well as time synchronization. After gathering all of this information, we need to identify which are the concerned working groups that I previously mentioned. These working groups will be during all the concept phase responsible of the reviews and validation of each milestone. So regarding 10 base T1S, the working group's concern are the in-vehicle co communication from the CASIC platform, the methodology working group also affected for introducing the multi-drop, and due to the fact that 10 base T1S is impacting only the low level, the adaptive platform only specifying the functional cluster will not be affected. As an information, this overview will be soon updated because of the creation of a new working group dedicated to time synchronization. Now that we identified which specification and working room are affected, let's have a look on our solution for the release in November. In the detailing part of our concept, we localize the main modification on the driver layer of the communication stack. The main changes in the Ethernet transceiver will be int the introduction of PLCI configuration parameters. Due to possible transmission latencies induced by the combination of transmit opportunities and the lower data rate, we also specified on the Ethernet driver an optional buffer handling to prioritize the traffic. On the system template, the coupling elements defining the topology will be extended in order to support multi-drop connections. Additionally, constraints need to be added, such as the head nodes responsible of the beacon transmission shall remain unique within the multi-drop subcluster. As part of the solution and based on the already existing API defined by AutoSAR, we wanted to ensure the prioritization of certain types of time-critical traffic. On one hand, the generated messages by the application need to fit to the average assigned node bandwidth. On the other hand, it shall also be possible to handle priorities due to different transmission delays constraints, such as OBD responses, network management and time sync messages. As previously mentioned, this aspect for time-critical constraint might not be an issue for the existing Ethernet communication at 100 megabit in full duplex, but at a 10 time lower rate, with the delay between each transmit opportunity, as well as the fact that one frame per TOs are sent, the issue might be increased, especially if for some cost reason, there is no more than one hardware TXQ. This optional proposal, located in the Ethernet drivers, prioritizes the frame in software at the MAC level before giving them to the FI. These frames are stored in queue and will be reordered after the credit based shaper algorithm, also known as token buckets. The credit based shapers avoid also that only high priority frames are sent and lower getting outdated in their FIFOs. The priorities is in fact reuse parameters from the service layers and no new configuration specification is required. For the current validation phase, we plan to use the following setup, connecting the classical point-to-point -point connection to a multi-drop segment. We want to ensure that specific automotive messages are routed through the stack and timings are respected. We also want to validate our buffer handling proposal and we will test some error scenarios around the head node failures and eventual resets. This activity will take place until the end of the year. As a conclusion of this presentation, I would like to give you a brief summary. Our concept is divided into two parts. 10 base T1S support will be released as a draft in November 2020. This means that all of the new and modified specification will be integrated with the draft tagging. The final incorporation with the removal of the tag will be once the validations activities are over. 
Further incorporations are planned in a second phase in order to ensure 10 base t one ASS integration with switch on the drive 11 and the incorporation of the other five types using unusual interfaces which are not supported yet by Autosar. 10 base T1S is a technology who is still growing and be extended by IEEE and Open Alliance. But Autosar keeps also incorporating every release's new features. For the next step, we will keep track on all the activities around 10 base T1S, but also the evolution within the Ethernet communication stack in Autosar. On behalf of my team, I would like to thank you for your attention.